wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedipo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. Welcome to this hot afternoon session. May this heat mark the beginning of a new order of comfort. Yeah. When you're preparing for examinations, a lot of heat is generated. But when the result comes out, you forget that you ever suffered any heat. We are talking to ministries, God-ordained ministers, God ordained ministries who are already getting amazing results. All we are doing is reminding ourselves other things that may help to add to the rate of the results we are getting. Amen. And that shall be so. He said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. If it's not easy, it's not his yoke. Amen. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The text, the running text for this three day seminar is fulfilling your ministry. And the scripture we are dealing on is Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Say unto Archippus, take heed to the ministry that you have received of the Lord that you fulfill it. Say unto Archippus that you have received the ministry from the Lord does not guarantee its fulfillment. Take heed. Get to know what it takes and give it all it takes to fulfill the ministry you have received of the Lord. Say unto Archippus, take heed to the ministry that you have received of the Lord that thou fulfill it. Take heed. So we are here to start looking at issues that are crucial in fulfilling the ministry that we have received of the Lord. That scripture also suggests that any ministry we have not received from the Lord cannot be fulfilled. So it must be a ministry received from the Lord. Colossians 4, 17. Take heed. To the ministry that you have received from the Lord that you fulfill it. Not a ministry you designed by yourself, but a ministry delivered from the Lord. Why? God is not committed to what he has not delivered. If the vision is not from the Lord, you will be the one to fulfill it. If it is from the Lord, you just position yourself and do what he tells you to do and then he steps forward to fulfill it. Can I hear your amen? amen? So that we don't mistake ambitions, passion, impressions as vision. They are all different issues. A need is not equal to a calling. That there's a need is not equal to a calling on your life. For instance, we have needs today to service orphans. That need does not give you a calling to service orphans. It's a need. It's obvious. And God must have had somebody in mind that he positions there. It doesn't have to be you. So that you see a need is not equal to God calling you to make that need. Otherwise, there are needs every day. There are needs every day. Many years ago, the Lord said to me, because I was grieved with compassion for the people of Japan, and the Lord said, even though there is a need in Japan, you are not the one I'm sending. So a need is not equal to a calling. An open door is not equal to a divine vision. 
take heed to the ministry that you have received from the Lord that you fulfill it. So fulfilling your ministry begins with knowing that that ministry is from the Lord. If it's not from the Lord, it cannot be fulfilled. He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not prophesied. I have not spoken, yet they prophesied. So there are people who are running. A race they have not been assigned. If they give eight tracks to athletes on a hundred meters race, and you decide to create a track by yourself, and when they say on your marks you got together, get set and go, and then the whole of your babe, bah, 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 you got there first, you will not be counted. Because you have not been enlisted in that race. You are sweating. Your wife is clapping. Your children are clapping. They say, well, the first one to arrive, they say, it's irrelevant. It's not enlisted in that race. So you must get to know that the ministry you are pursuing is received from the Lord. That is very crucial. That is very crucial. That it's received from the Lord. The word take heed can be interpreted also from scriptures. <laughs> he said, giving all diligence to make your calling and election sure. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. So take heed means give it all it requires. There are fundamental requirements for the fulfillment of your ministry. He said, giving all diligence to make your calling and election sure. Many are celebrating the vision from the Lord, but it's not coming true. And the wonder is it the Lord who has spoken? It's the Lord who has spoken, but there is a requirement or there are requirements that you must fulfill to fulfill that ministry. Giving all diligence to make your calling and election sure. And he began to list all the things that you needed to add. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge long-suffering. And I say, if your all these things are in you and they abide, they make you to be fruitful and that you have need of nothing. That is fulfillment. So there are things to engage. There are vital forces to engage to fulfill your ministry. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? No ministry will fulfill itself, no matter how heavenly it may appear. No ministry can fulfill itself. So no lazy man has a future in ministry. Giving all diligence. If you must make your election, your calling an election, sure. In chapter 2 of 2 Timothy verse 3, the Bible says, And no one that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this world, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And everyone that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. So there are laws, there are rules and regulations that makes you a prize winner in ministry. There are rules, there are regulations. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 5. So the word take heed does not mean just keep reciting what God has told you or start you know, cramming and, and, and memorizing it and telling everybody it is giving all diligence. It is striving lawfully. And do you know the interesting thing? It is a hard work. That thou endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It's more comfortable for me to be resting now against the evening session, but I'll be failing the assignment that I'm given if I were resting. So if I had 45 minutes of break, great. Oh Lord, refresh me and get me down on my assignment. So it's vital. You see, <laughs> hard work is the only way to become a high flyer. If you are not a hard worker, you'll never become a high flyer. Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk. This is very crucial and very vital. Ministry is not a calling into laziness. 
is not a calling into doing nothing. It's a calling into doing more than normal. More than what? Normal. It's a calling to doing more than what is normal. Paul said, I labored more abundantly than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. So there are fundamental laws that you must obey to fulfill your ministry. And after 24 years, of trying to fulfill this, I might share with you a bit of experience to the little level that I have seen what you may call fulfillment. But you see, fulfillment is not so much of getting results, it's getting results to the level that is required by the caller. Unto whom much is given. What? The Ministry of the Redemption Worship Center has church networks in about 40 nations and have a great church out there in South Carolina by the measure that is given to them. So if they had 20 now, they have failed because the giver has given them more than that. So it's not so much about getting results. It's much more about getting results to match the expectations of the caller. For unto whom much is given, much is required. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? amen? If this university were not built today, we would have failed his expectation because it was part of his agenda for this mandate. We may not know here, but when we get there, we say, my son, this was part of your assignment. You went asleep. This was part of your assignment. You never saw it. You wanted to be comfortable and relaxed. This was part of your, it's about unto whom much is given, much is required. So it's not so much of getting results and having a big church. It's so much of meeting the aspirations, meeting the expectations of the caller. Can I hear your loud amen? amen. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? In the eyes of a lot of people, oh, this ministry has fulfilled this calling. That may be your judgment. In the eyes of the master, Maybe we have failed about four fundamental issues that ought to have taken place some five years ago, some some three years ago, some some 15 years ago, and we were asleep. We couldn't see it. Who knows? So it's important to stay spiritually awake. Can I hear your amen? amen. To stay spiritually awake because it will require of you to the level that he has committed into your hand. Can I hear your loud amen? amen. It will require of you to the level that he has committed into your hand. So I would like to look at a few laws that he helped me to discover in the pursuit of this heavenly mandate. And I'd like you to listen very intensely as we look at them. Every calling into ministry requires everything that you are and everything that you have. The first law, therefore, is the law of total abandon. The law of total abandonment. You abandon your all in all on the altar of sacrifice to fulfill his mandate. Let's look at the apostles. They ask this fundamental question, and I want you to listen very well. Master, we have left all. What then shall we have? We have left how much? There are many ministries who have left nothing. And yet, yet they want to fulfill the ministry that God has given them. We have left all. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28 and 29. We have left all. What shall we have then? And Jesus said, there is no one who has left father or mother or sister or wife. For my sake and for the gospel, we shall not have many more time, many times more in this time and in the world to come, life everlasting. The same is repeated in chapter 20, in chapter 10 of Mark, verse 28 to 30. We have left all. What shall we have then? And Jesus said, There is no one who has left all 
who shall not have many fold more in this time. Luke chapter 18, verse 28 to 30. We have left all. What shall we have then? Now, what does that mean? Until you have left all, you may never fulfill your ministry. There are many ministers today who are there in ministry for themselves. They have not given anything. They are only looking for how to have everything. We have left all. What shall we have then? That is the number one law in your quest to fulfilling any divine mandate. Have you left all? Until your life becomes a seed. Fulfillment of your ministry is not in view. Until your life becomes a seed, the fulfillment of your ministry is not in view. Until your life becomes a seed, the fulfillment of your ministry is not in view. I can speak today by the grace of God like the apostles. I have left all and I have followed thee. Last year we had the most threatening attack on my wife's health. And in the course of that attack, I was in 27 nations for ministry. While she was dying, I was going. We have left all because if I stay behind, I'm not the one to heal her. I'm not the healer. My job is to obey him and he takes care of what remains. We have left all and we have followed thee. What shall we have then? It may sound strange to you. If ministry crashes, I crash with it. I have no security anywhere. My security is my confidence in the caller. I don't have any security. It may sound stupid and crazy for you or in your sight. My only security is Jesus. I don't have nothing anywhere. If ministry sinks, bless God, I sink with him. If ministry rises, bless God, he takes me along. We have left all and we have followed thee. I've been invited on many boards, but I've been sitting only one, on only one board in my life, the ministry board. We have left all. I think the challenge of many ministers today is that they have left nothing. Most have left some. Very few have truly left all. We have left all and we have followed thee. What shall we have then? He said, you fulfill ministry in a grand style. If you have truly left all. If you have truly left all. You fulfill ministry in a grand style. I've never been to a place to minister and I have an idea or think of what they may give me. I'm constantly thinking of what he will want me to throw to them from the treasures he's given to me, if there's any sort of thing. We have left all and we have followed it. If you are here for your personal aggrandizement, your personal welfare, you haven't started. You have not started. If ministry is to meet your family needs, and live in a big house and ride a big car. You are not in ministry, you are in a misery. Misery. You are in a misery. You live in a miserable life. You live in a miserable life. We have left all. That's what the apostles said. That's what made the, all the difference. We have left all. Elisha slew the oxen and said bye bye forever. And went after Elijah, he fulfilled his ministry. We have left all and we have followed thee. How many understand what you are talking about? The law of total abandonment. Your life becoming a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your only reasonable service. We have left all and we have followed thee. What shall we have then? When the Lord said, arise and get down into this forest into this wilderness. Quite a number of people thought it was pride. How could you come to this bush and expect people to follow you? Let's see we follow him. I'm not bothered about his following me. I'm bothered about who I'm following. 
I'm following the Lord. He said, follow me and I will make you. Follow me. Don't bother about what they are saying. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Under three weeks, everybody gathered here. Under three weeks, church was full to its brim. Because I would rather sink following him than shine following myself. We have left all. We say, what if ministry crash? We crash together. Why not? What if nobody came? Hallelujah. I know the one I'm following. I'll keep following him. Total abandonment. I told the Lord, even if you say there is no more heaven, I will still follow you. Anywhere you go, we go together. If you refuse to answer my prayers again till I die, the ones who answered before I didn't qualify for it, I'll keep following you. Until you abandon yourself to the caller, your ministry may never be fulfilled. This is very important. There are so many strategies people try to engage. They, 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 they bring in marketing strategies for church. They turn church people to laboratory specimens. If you do this for them on Sunday, they will come this coming Sunday. If you do this one, they will come this coming Sunday. And God is laughing in heaven. How many are willing to abandon all? The songwriter said in the song, Trust and Obey. One stanza said, but you never can tell that the light of his love until all on the altar you lay. For the favor he shows and the mercy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can tell that the light of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the mercy he shows and the favor he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. All, until you lay all on the altar, you don't know how, how good it is. You don't know how good God can be until all on the altar we lay. Somebody excited here today. That is law number one. That was the first law that the apostles had to obey to be launched into the fulfillment of their ministry. We have left all and we have followed thee. What shall we have then? The second law for everyone that is called into ministry, that desire to fulfill his ministry, is the law of absolute dependency on God. What do I call it? The law of absolute dependency on God. Someone said to me in one statement, Brother David, what can be called the secret of the exploits of the Lord in your ministry? And without hesitation, I said, absolute dependency on God. Absolute dependency on God. It's built on three scriptural philosophies. I've come to a point in my life that I said, whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. How many hear that? Whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. Two, whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. And number three, wherever God cannot take me to, let me never get there. Absolute dependency on God. God always, God only. So that at every point in your life, the happiness is traceable to God. Aren't you glad to know that this network of ministries that has about 300 churches in 300 cities and towns in Nigeria, has primary schools spread across 14 cities, built this university by the hand of God, does not owe any man or not a thank you. It came direct from God. Came where? Direct from God. There are certain developments around the world today that look very fanciful. 
but they are very disruptive. We thank you very much. If you are not there, this ministry will not be here. It is annoying to God. It's annoying to God. Every time you share his glory with anybody, you annoy him. God can use anybody. Thank God for using them. But thank the one using them, not them. That will make a lot, many ministries hang only on people. And that's why they can go only as far as people can take them. The law of absolute dependency on God. We will require three million dollars to get one or two things done. It will never be announced in church. You just connect with the one who called and say they they need for you to pay this so much next week. Just make sure you put it on your schedule. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It looks so primitive, but it's a very powerful current law. It hasn't failed us once. One week to the time we are going to dedicate the faith tabernacle, we needed 187 million Nigerian naira, which equal to about 1.5 million US dollars. One week to the time, it was not announced. And yet it was met. Absolute dependency on God. God told me, he said, you are not sent by the people. You are sent to the people. The people are not responsible for your going. I am the, your caller who is responsible for your going. So don't make the people look like your caller. Now let me say this to you. If the whole of this place is built without looking onto people, there is nothing God wants to do in your life that he cannot do by himself. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? Absolute dependency on God. My friend Creflo Dollar was here one of those days and he said, Brother David, now, tell me precisely, how do you pay for all these things? And I looked at Fred, I mean Creflo, and I said, Cref, I said, faith. He said, what? Faith? <laughs> and I tried to explain to him, I said, faith is a universal currency. It holds the same value in every nation of the earth. <laughs> Why? Because faith brings the omnipotency of God to bear upon human limitations. Faith is a universal currency. It holds the same value in every nation of the earth because faith taps into the omnipotency of God in dealing with human limitations. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? The law of absolute dependency on God. It's a fundamental law. You know what Jesus said? As you go, greet no man on the way. I'll take care of you. <laughs> I will take care of you. He says, salute no man. You know what that means? Lobby around no man's resources. Don't lobby around any elder in your church. Don't lobby around a core group that have money. Salute no man on the way. Carry no post, no script. I don't need your savings. I'm responsible. And in Luke 22, verse, 50, verse 35, he said, when I sent you without pause or scripts or shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, nothing. And Thomas was there. If they lacked something, he would raise his hand. I said, Master, we lack food. We lack transportation money. They lacked nothing. God was their only source. Is God big enough to be your source? Is God big enough to be your source? When God needed an aircraft for this ministry, 1996, we took an offering on a Saturday morning service. Say Saturday morning. There is time to buy the aircraft. Let everyone give as God has blessed him. Hallelujah. We took it only once. And there was enough to buy the aircraft. And we collected change back. Amen. Last year, we bought a second aircraft without taking any offering. Without taking what? without taking any offering, paid for cash. And the dealers in America say, don't pay cash. Ah, we say, we normally pay cash in our own. We don't pay. <laughs> we pay cash. Help me tell your neighbor, God is big enough, God is big enough. to meet all the needs 
of the ministry has given you. God is big enough to meet all the needs of the ministry has given you. The law of absolute dependency on God. Number three law. Somebody asked me also years ago, he said, Brother David, how do you get things done so cheaply in this ministry? And I answered without hesitation, we do nothing except it's commanded. We do nothing except it is commandment or commanded. What does that mean? And that's where the third law comes out. The law of divine commandment. The law of divine commandment. Ezekiel chapter 37. He said, and I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I beheld, the bones came together. Flesh covered it and skin covered the flesh. I, I just did as commanded and God went into action. When you operate as commanded, you are always in command. When you operate as commanded, you are always in command. Listen to this. There is no way I could have led God's people to come into this forest except that the Lord commanded it. It would be very stupid and crazy to move out of the city into the forest and expect people to follow. Church is to serve people, not to serve beasts. You should be in the midst of people naturally. All the laws of church growth, all church growth strategies research, they are against this commandment. But Ezekiel said, and I prophesied as commanded. I prophesy as commanded. The law of divine commandment puts you supernaturally in command because the commander is always backing you to effect his word. Is somebody hearing that for God's sake? Are you hearing that for God's sake? So you don't pack your ministry from one city and go to another one because you feel it is a better place. If it's not commanded, you will be stranded. Because the one backing you will not be there. You don't pack your luggage from one country and move to another one because you feel it's a greener pasture. Before you know what you are doing, you are on the floor. Who is it that says, and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Lamentation, chapter 3 and verse 37. Lamentation 3, 37. And we see it that says, and it comes to pass when the Lord commanded it not. So if it's not commanded by the Lord, no man can bring it to pass. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. So I speak. So I judge and my judgment is true. So Jesus was operating perpetually as commanded by the Father. So when you and I are operating as commanded by God, we will never be stranded. We will never be stranded. Now listen to me. Someone has come here now and has seen God and his hand in building this university. That does not give you a calling to build a university. Otherwise, they may use your dead body to lay the foundation. <laughs> there is no way I will get into this one by myself. I will be stupid to do it. Because it is impossible to fund it naturally. It has to be by supernatural funding. And if it's not commanded by him, he will not be committed to fund it. I'm too glad that there is no form of indebtedness on this campus. We are not owing anybody under heaven. There is no overdraft. There is no material that should be paid for in future. Everything on this ground is 100% fully paid for. Fully paid for. And there is nobody under stress in the church. The pastor is not under stress. His team members are not under stress. Membership are not under stress. Members will come here to even know what is going on. There is no pressure. Okay, this building requires $3 million more. From there. But before we entered into this place, I told the Lord, is this your commandment? If it is not, I don't need it. And the Lord said, it is my commandment. That's why we're here. 
If you don't want to be stranded, operate only as commanded. Can I hear your amen if you are there? Amen. Operate only as commanded. Today, there are many motivational speakers who tell you that anything you can conceive, you can deliver. And they frustrate you so much, you start conceiving what God has not ordained for you to conceive. And then pregnancy becomes perpetual pregnancy. I can never see the, day, the light of the day. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? When the Lord commanded it not? When the accreditation team came to accredit our programs at Covenant University, one of the professors said, the equipment in our engineering department is much, worth much more than all the federal universities in Nigeria put together. Jesus University out, 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 out there. That's the way it works. We've had a number of American academics coming for one seminar workshop, and one of them said, even in America, what is happening here is a miracle. Even in America, what is happening here in black Africa is a miracle. If they transport this whole facility to America today, it will be a miracle. They'll be covering it in their media. Why? The hand of God. The hand of the commander is feasible on his commandment. That is what happens. Don't see your brother building a 5,000 seat auditorium and you go and lay foundation for a 6,000 because you have seen your brother to him. Uh, you, you may find out that uh, your blood may be used for the dedication of it. You don't need to. Don't see your other brother building a hospital as commanded by God. And say, so when it's building a hospital, we will build a specialist hospital. Uh -huh. You may be the first patient to be admitted. <laughs> Operating as commanded is what puts you in command. That is law number three. You know you cannot be crowned except you strive lawfully. These are fundamental laws. People will only talk about prayer and fasting. Now you have prayed and you have fasted and nothing is happening. If God has not commanded you prayer and fasting, won't we'll give it a backing. It will only add to, your, to the frustration. That is law number three. Now we look at law number four. The law number four. It is the law of mentorship. The law of mentorship. Mentorship. African leaders are only recognized after they are dead. It's an evil spirit. Leaders in Africa are only recognized after they are dead. By inheritance. They are victims of castigations, character assassinations, and what have you. That's why most people in Africa don't have mentors. Nobody seems to be qualified to mentor them. So they live a mentorless life. And by leading a mentorless life, they never reach their fullest potentials. Because God has arranged men on your path to bring the best of you out in life. No man is an island of himself. The Bible says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? Where our father strode and walk in it and you shall find rest for your souls. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. And they said, no, we will not walk in it. That is too old a path to walk in. Show me any man without a mentor. You will never be able to trace leadership aura on his life. Every great leader is an offspring of another leader. If you don't have any man that you are following, there may not be any man following you. In chapter 6 of Hebrews, to identify a plausible, positive mentor for your life. The Bible said, Hebrews 6 and verse 12, 
the word of God says, Neither be ye slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promises. That is, there are people who have obtained what you are striving to obtain. Look out for them and try to uncover their secrets and engage those secrets in the pursuit of your own life and you will soon be there. Can I hear your loud amen? amen? When the Lord called me into ministry and I was moving into the full-time ministry, the Lord said to me, I will not have you go as others have gone. I will have your, you laid hands upon, according to Titanium 34 and verse 9, and you shall be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Don't lay your hands on yourself. I have ordained someone to lay hands on you. And I said, Lord, who have you appointed to lay hands on me? He said, send for my servant Adeboye, the G.O. today of um, Redeemed Christian Church. And he shall lay his hands on you, and you shall be filled with the spirit of wisdom. All my peers in the world know I'm not operating by natural wisdom. I'm operating by divine wisdom. God connected me to a human source through which he would release that deposit. There are certain deposits that you have with God that are channeled through certain human vessels. If you despise them, you will live without that deposit, you die. I haven't been a student of Kenneth Egan for many years. Precisely 20 years after I've been following his ministry with utmost excitement, the Lord said to me in, the, in my study room one day, he brought Egan out in a picture. I wasn't sleeping. 5 a.m. in the morning. And he said, look at him. And I looked at him. He said, pattern your ministry after this man. So God has people ahead of you that are to help you in taking the most appropriate steps in your life. Pattern your ministry after this man. I craved the unction upon Egan so badly that I was in a meeting in 1986. And I said, Lord, whatever makes Egan Egan, I want it. I want the serenity, the calmness of his ministry, the noiselessness. You don't have to make noise to make news. There are too many noisemakers in the world. You don't need to make noise to make news. Egan was sitting in that corner and turning the entire world around by the Spirit of God. I said, I desire this. And as I was looking at him in the gallery, I sat in the gallery. I wasn't near where I should sit. That was not my level. If I tried to sit down there, I would destroy myself. So I was up in the gallery, and the power of God fell on me, and something as he was ministering just struck on my life. And I broke down in tears, weeping profusely, uncontrollably. And the Lord said, my son David, the baton has been passed over to you. There is no race you are running in the world that somebody is not holding a baton for it already. There is no race. The truth is that where Egan stopped is where this faith movement is starting. This ministry is not just a ministry. This ministry is a movement. This ministry here is what? A movement. It's a movement that is influencing nations of the earth. There are many churches across the nations of the earth that pattern after what the Lord is doing here today. Egan led a faith movement of the first order. And God gave me the button to lead the faith movement of the second order. And I know that. Why? Because you believe in them, you believe in their God, you believe in what they carry. And God said, okay, partake of it. God said what? Partake of it. What am I talking about? The law of mentorship must be recaptured by everyone. If you don't have a mentor today, we can't be sure of your future tomorrow. Mentorship guarantees the future of everyone. I'm sure you'll be glad to know every year hands are laid on me by the men that God has arranged on my path. Every year. Every year. That's why my head is never dry of oil. Every year. Last week, Saturday, one of my mentors poured oil on me afresh and he said, go forth and see God's hand the way you have never seen before. And it's happening. There are many people that hand has been laid on them only once in their life. The oil has run dry longest time. 
He said, let not your head lack oil. That is, let the oil stay fresh. Let the oil stay fresh. Let the oil stay fresh. The last prayer that Egan prayed for me before he left. Fresh oil. Fresh oil, Lord. Fresh oil. Keeping it ever fresh. Fresh oil. And he's speaking till now. Greatness has passed in the front of many people without recognizing it. The law of mentorship. The law of mentorship. The law of mentorship. The number four, five law, I think number five now. The number five law is the law of focus. Say with me, the law of focus. The law of focus. The law of focus. Jesus said, if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Matthew 6, 22. If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye be single. In 1 Kings chapter 20, and verse 39 and 40, there was a prophetic parable here. Why the king, the prophet disguised himself as wounded in the war front. And then the king was passing by and one of the warriors said, keep this captive. If he goes, your life will go for it. And he said, as I was busy here and there, he was gone. There are too many here and there people. They do everything that comes per day. They are always following the vogue of each day. This is what they are preaching now. Let's come back to it. This is what is the hot cake in town. Let's come back to it. Lack of focus can make you lose your ministry. Lack of focus can make any man lose his ministry. The more focused you are, the more fruitful your ministry becomes. The more focused you are, the more fruitful your ministry becomes. Egan was running his all faith crusade a week to the time they passed. He stayed on his assignment perpetually. Billy Graham has stayed on the message of salvation since the beginning. He has not drifted one inch from it. There is a vogue of the healing ministry, he didn't join them. There is a vogue of church ministry, church growth ministry, he didn't join them. He has remained focused on his own assignment. And what a joy that today is listed among the six people that changed the last century. For staying on a simple message, the simplest message in this world. You may never be able to touch any revelation in that message, but that's the one he was given, and he stayed with it. He's been saying the same thing every day. Okay, nice time. Come on now. Don't waste your time. Jesus is waiting for you. And everybody old and young, they are going. Focus. Focus. You know, when Jesus came into, I mean, in his earthly ministry, he was meeting the literal needs of people, and so they wanted to make him a king. John chapter 6 and verse 15. And when Jesus perceived that they were coming to force him to be a, a king, he fled. That's not where he belongs. He stayed true to his mission till the last day. Till the last day. Till the last day. Someone gave Billy Graham 6,000 acres of property for Billy Graham University. And he was struggling with it and struggling with it until he came to a point where God said, it's not part of your assignment. So he dropped it. He had the clout thick enough to make that happen. Everybody thought by the wisdom of God in his life, he must build a university. And they were there making money available to make it happen. But he discovered that's not part of his assignment. He's left on the soul winning crusade. He had an unusual tie with Richard Nixon. It almost destroyed his ministry. From that time, he kept a long distance from the White House. He only goes there to pray and to preach and go away. He was not discussing anything with anybody. Nixon's life would have ruined this ministry. There are ministers here who are always running around government houses. That might finish your ministry in no time. This is what Jesus said. For to this end was I born, and for this cause came I to the world, that I may bear witness unto the truth. 
he stayed with one reason for which he came would you stay with the one reason for which you are here that will make all the difference these are fundamental laws that enhances fulfillment of your ministry amen the law of total abandonment the law of absolute dependency on god the law of operating by divine commandment the law of mentorship and then the law of focus i do hope this bit of information will help in realigning our priorities as we go on everyone needs to understand the laws for fulfilling his ministry to god of heaven be all the glory is someone excited here this afternoon amen we we'll give you praise hallelujah praise the lord shall we lift up our hands and give him thanks he's a good god he reigns forever